Hi beautiful souls, I hope you're having a beautiful day. In this video, I wanted to address a question that I have been getting a lot recently from all viewers and even clients who ask me, when is the time to end a relationship? How do you know that I should end a relationship? And uh, my personal view on this is that if there is no longer an alignment between mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, um, and like interests, these five areas are so important to um, a relationship because this is where people tend to connect. And I'm not talking about doing everything together. Absolutely not. I'm a firm believer of the fact that both people have to have um, their own interests, their own hobbies, their own time alone to be able to reflect on, on their lives, to be able to connect with themselves, to meditate, to sit in stillness, to you know, pursue their passions and hobbies and have set even separate friends. I am 100% believe in that. But if you have no longer any alignment, any, like this is really radical and quite extreme, any alignment around mental, um, you know, stimulation where you both are like thinking about life and things very differently. You know, maybe one of you has awakened and has gone down a certain path to study psychology, spirituality, philosophy, and um, has a different view on life now. And the other person sort of stayed the same and awakened, you know, watching a lot of um, violent movies, watching news and um, sort of staying the same, like really kind of not really bothering to learn anything new, but just living by the old values of consuming, consuming, consuming their way through life. And you, you no longer connect to that or relate to that mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, then uh, there will be problems in, in that relationship that are significant and um, they it shouldn't be overlooked. So let's talk about, so I've talked about the mental stuff, then emotionally, if you feel like you are, perhaps maybe you are the one who has awakened, who has become a lot more in, emotionally intimate with yourself, intimacy is really into me, I see, I am much more intimate and aware of my own feelings, how I think, what I desire, my intuition, what my intuition is telling me and how it's guiding me through life. And I am now much more emotionally available to myself. And you then often want that from your partner. But if he hasn't gone through that transformation himself and he remained the same, you will likely be clashing on that because you will require a little more depth in a relationship, more kind of emotional bonding, sharing feelings, sharing like um even maybe talk about, um, you don't have to do this in to the extreme level, but at least, you know, some level of emotional intimacy and connection where you talk about how you're in a you're in a world really, how you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're going through, what you're healing. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that your partner needs to be your therapist and absolutely know about every single thing you're doing. No, again. Uh, it's all about balance because if you're far too much the other end, like sharing absolutely everything, it completely kills um, the mystery and romance and allure and, you know, that's the spice, the, the interest. Uh, oh, I wonder what the other person is doing, you know. I wonder if uh, how they how they think about me, feel about me. And, and you have to retain that. And this is not about playing games, but about kind of retaining a level of individual um, like life and um, connection to self and uh, even privacy, a level of privacy that you have around your thoughts, around your, your feelings, around the things that you might be healing. Um, and, and maybe you will share the odd one or two things um, every now and then oh this is what's happening with me and you may go into a little more depth but you're not demanding the other person to be your therapist or anything like that you're simply sharing your emotional state with another person and you want that person to reciprocate to to acknowledge that to see you to to understand you to connect with you emotionally and even maybe explore that oh you know i see you've been um, working on yourself wow you know um, that's absolutely amazing like I, 
and and it's not like you expect any praise, any validation, or anything, but just simply wanting to connect with another human being, heart to heart, which is a very human thing, and um, um, it it is something that we lack in a society, especially lately, especially with this COVID, where so many of us have been pushed into isolation, and and the human contact, the human interaction, has been affected. Um, so it's even more important to be able to share our own hearts in a very safe way, in a loving way, for um, to like for to really be present with each other, to see each other, to hear each other, emotionally, mentally, um, you know, spiritually, soul to soul, heart to heart, and that's what I'm really talking about. I'm not talking about anybody babysitting, but simply be able to be present with you and hold space for you, as in when you're going through something. And, and the same in, in return, like if you see them going through something challenging, you know, being able to actually, uh, sometimes the hardest thing when we see our loved ones suffering, sometimes the hardest thing is to actually detach and, and trust that they've got it, they've got it, they will come to me and ask for help when they need help. And, uh, but I trust them, I trust their abilities to be able to work it out by themselves they know and you remind them if, if you feel like the reminder is worthy and, and necessary look i'm here for you if you want to talk um you know you're not trying to push anything onto them control them or heal them or anything like that you simply kind of emotionally be able to be present with them hold space for them and have that emotional bond uh, where you both feel safe to express whatever the you know you want to express to each other and uh, respectfully and openly and lovingly and that to me is emotional intimacy so let's talk about the spiritual uh, intimacy so if there is no longer an alignment between the third level and that is really the, the spiritual intimacy so for example you are someone maybe who has gone through an awakening journey and um you really crave and long for um, like a, a person who is aligned with some of those values. And I will talk about values in just a minute, but uh, it's so important that, um, you know, you you kind of are really honest with yourself because I've seen it far too many times where a woman come to me in my coaching practice where one of the p- people in a relationship has awakened, has gone through an awakening and the other one remained asleep. And it's causing a lot of friction because they struggle to connect. Their values have um, gone in completely opposite directions now. Like they want something totally different from their lives, from how they live, from how they socialize, how they consume, how they interact, even what type of content they consume. And this goes down to the very, like, um, you know, simple things like what kind of food you eat, what kind of um, content you consume, whether it's TV, whether it's mu- movies, what kind of um, friends you surround yourself with. And and uh, like having someone who is spiritually aligned with you, um, he doesn't have to have the same mission or anything like that, but he at least being able to be open to some of those spiritual concepts and having more of an awareness that I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, that um, like that I am able to create my own reality because this universe is really formed based on cause and effect. So my actions um, will um, have, an, have impact on myself and on other people and really understanding that the base level that, you know, I'm here to create my own reality, that I'm not a victim, that I am... Uh, uh, in fact, the creator or creatrix, and um, I am here wanting to evolve, wanting to heal, perhaps some of the stuff that I have gone through in the past, and really liberate myself from that baggage for me to be able to emerge um, free and whole, you know, balance between the masculine and feminine energy within, and really look at myself as a soul um, in a very different way to how. A lot of people out there who still feel like victims, a lot of unawakened people who sort of still, you know, behave in many ways like um, a wounded child, uh, hoping of, to be saved, hoping to be rescued. You know, th- th- this is what I really mean by having a spiritual connection with someone, that that, that connection, you know, when, the, when an individual is balanced within their own energy, 
of being the, their own masculine and feminine energy, they will bring a totally different energy into the relationship because they are they may have healed some of the core aspects of their energy that have held them back, or maybe they were doing a lot of projecting and, and um, projecting past experiences onto the present people. That is often very hurtful, and um, and um, they will be creating a lot of self sabotage for the parent for themselves. And um, so, having more of an awareness of of being a soul, having a human experience, and being here to evolve and create our own reality. And and you know, if you no longer have that sort of alignment with another person in your relationship, then this this again could cause friction and and. Um, like problems conflicts even not kind of being able to solve problems in 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 a similar manner because you know we are we're not gonna um pretend that um in a healthy relationship there are no problems and actually i really believe that any healthy relationship has conflicts and it's how you solve those conflicts together is what matters and it either brings you closer as a couple where you bond you you trust each other you you um support one another believe in one another or you kind of like have friction um and the reason the very reason why the friction happens is that brings me on to the next point which is um you know not having the same values anymore like what i value now in my life, having gone through a very, very brutally painful spiritual awakening is very different to what I used to value in the past. And, um, you know, please no judgment, but I, you know, when I was unawakened and climbing the corporate ladder, my, I was literally striving for the, um, uh, you know, for the golden dream uh, to, um, get married to have a good career to have a um, two two children and and um you know to be comfortable comfortable financially to maybe get a pet and you know my I thought that this is gonna be my life i I like thought um and i I kind of always wanted to have all the things like new and shiny and and wanted to always like buy the latest fashion and have the latest handbag and shit like that that doesn't interest me anymore whatsoever and that's because I have changed my values I have evolved around my values and I now value my, like uh, um, different things I value human connection I value a human heart I value someone who's open and vulnerable able to express how they feel I value I, I am hugely, hugely passionate about environment and nature, protecting nature, protecting animals. And even lately what's going on, you know, protecting each other, really, human rights. We're being assaulted left, right and center by these tyrannical governments all around the world at the moment with what's going on. And, um, you know, all speech is being censored. All human rights have been taken away, or freedom and liberties have been taken away, freedom to travel, even many times to earn money, and even you know freedom to choose what we put into our own bodies have been have been uh, are being under pressure and attack at the moment. It's ridiculous, and so I have changed tremendously as a person as a result, and I now choose to live very minimally. The content I consume, for example on the TV is uh, I don't watch any violent movies. I, I don't like any violent, not even fear-based news. I literally feed my mind what I how I want to feel. If I want to feel happy, I watch comedies. I watch um, comedians, happy things. I read happy books. I read uh, books that help me evolve, expand in consciousness, learn something new, become a better person. And that's what I value. And if your partner has still remained at the, the old values, you know, gathering like materialistic shit, consuming his way or her way through life, and they haven't evolved, then this will cause a problem, a lot of problems, because everything, every action, every decision we take in our lives is driven by, by what we value. We have a hierarchy of values and um it is unconscious to us. Um, the and the every single decision and choice we make in our lives, we put through that filter of our values, and then we basically act in alignment with that. 
So if there, if your values have changed and your partner's values have remained the same and and if there is no longer an alignment, this is going to be causing a lot of friction, a lot of pain, a lot of arguments. And um, it is really heartbreaking when this happens. But, um, you know, I firmly believe that um, oftentimes, and I've seen this with many women who, who come to me, it is actually a blessing in disguise to be able to detach and release that connection with love and liberate themselves from all of the pain, drama and trauma. Because once you do, it ultimately puts you in a different vibrational state. So you lift your own vibration and then you will be more magnetic to be able to attract people who are on your level of consciousness, like on your energetic level and who are actually able to create with you those soul enriching type of harmonious connections that you are craving, that you came here to experience, and that could, you know, that applies to all facets of life. It's it's obviously a relationship you have with yourself, relationship you have with your family, friends, your your um, you know, your partner. So if this connection no longer like is in alignment, then um I just would really encourage you to work through all of these points and ask yourself and be really truthful to yourself. Like, what is this relationship still giving you? And if you are still getting some, something out of it or if you're not ready, just be brutally honest with yourself because your your body, your heart, your soul doesn't lie. And the biggest gift you can ever give to yourself is honesty. Because when you give yourself honesty, your body is always listening and you 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 then know that you can trust yourself because you're being honest and it, it sort of multiplies and compounds and it gives you confidence. It, it builds like self-governance and self-reliance and um, self-esteem. Like I know I can trust myself. I'm always speaking with honesty to myself and it gives you courage to then take the sometimes painful but necessary steps to liberate yourself from connections that no longer serve you and that no longer are of the highest good. Um, there are a couple of other things that you may want to consider, or maybe one other thing that you may want to consider, which is um, having common interests um, within the five. So it's mental, emotional, spiritual, physical alignment, and physical is more about like sexual needs, preferences, um, is there trust, is there harmony? Is there, again, are there similar values? Um, what do you value in that category? And then fifth is really the um, recreational interest. Like, do you have stuff that you share and value and enjoy together as a couple? And um, at least something, at least one or two things where you connect, where you can have fun and do something together that you share and enjoy and actually build that connection even more. So... Uh, while understanding that um, you both should al always still retain your own individual lives, your own individual friends and, and um, you know, time and space for, for selves. Um, it's really all about balance. So I hope this helps you. So these are the five things that I would invite you to reflect on if you are questioning whether or not to stay in a relationship or whether or not it's time to let go of it. So I'm sending you so much love, peace and joy. And if you have any questions for me, please drop me a comment below. I will be gathering questions and filming more videos in the coming future. And I would love to hear from you to see what you're healing, what you're currently struggling with, if I can help you in any way, because that is my role. That's why I'm here. And that's what I'm massively passionate about. And if I see Every time I see a woman shine and thrive and heal trauma and overcome her, you know, her blocks and challenges and rise up from the ashes, I am like something inside of me is like, yes, I, I'm rooting for you, goddess. You've got this. And just know that you are incredibly resourceful, incredibly powerful. And no matter where you are at in your journey, you are immensely supported. I really want you to know that connect with your heart, connect with your divine and allow that love within you to expand to the point that you actually feel carried and like held by that love that's coming from the source that you are from the inside out to everything and everyone you meet. Sending you so much love. Namaste.